Console my people, the ones dear to me. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem. The time of your mourning is ended now. The Lord of life will come. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make safe a highway for God. Welcome to your cathedral. I'm Father Greg Sakowitz, a police officer sitting at the local speed trap. A teenager goes flying by. After pulling the teenager over, the police officer approaches the teenager and says, young man, I've been waiting here all day for you. The teenager replies, officer, I got here as fast as I could. I like that when Father Mark is shaking his head. Special thank you again to Mark Teresi, David Jonas, beautiful singing, playing the piano during this Advent season. Mark and David, thank you. Special again thanks to Father Mark, producer Smolka, who again puts his whole package together of the song, B-roll, background, video production, the homily. So Father Mark Smolka, thank you very much. Summer was over. The teacher was asking the second grade class about their summer vacations. She turned to little Johnny and asked, Johnny, where'd you go this summer? We visited my grandmother in Saskatchewan, little second grader Johnny said. That sounds like an excellent vocabulary word, Johnny. Can you tell the class how to spell the word Saskatchewan? Little Johnny thought about it for a second and said, come to think of it, Grandma lives in Green Bay. <laughs> but I still don't like the Green Bay Packers, okay? In a Mary Knoll Missionary Magazine from some years ago, I'd like to share this short missionary story written by Sister Kerrigan. Mr. Chen was a patient in the hospital where I was working in Chai Chung, Taiwan. He had AIDS. He confided in me that he was afraid to die because he had never practiced any formal religion. But I have a God in me, he said, pointing to his heart. I replied, tell me about your God and I'll tell you about mine. I can't share my God with you, Mr. Chen protested, because you're a well person, and I'm a man dying of AIDS. When I assured him that I would understand, Mr. Chen began, my God is very forgiving and doesn't keep thinking about the bad things I've done my whole life. My God wants to help me not to be afraid. My God is beautiful, and the best thing is God loves me. And the best thing, God loves me. Mr. Chen, I said, if our gods are not the same God, they're identical twins. We listen in today's second reading, or second letter of Peter, the second Sunday of Advent. The Lord shows us generous patience, since he wants none to perish, but all to come to repentance. And again, from today's gospel, the passage from Mark. Make ready the way of the Lord. Clear him a straight path. We are all called to repent and start over. Our God is a God of second chances. Our God runs after us. Our God pursues us. God forgives us faster than we can forgive ourselves. But to change our heart means a new way of acting, which leads to new consequences. The following story helps better connect my point. Many years ago, when I was an associate pastor, then pastor at St. Mary of the Woods in Edgebrook, I was visiting the religious education program at St. Mary of the Woods. In one of the classrooms, either third or fourth grade, I asked the children, if we repented and if everyone started loving and acting more like Jesus, what are some of the changes that would be seen in our country? Little Brian raised his hand and said, if all of us became more like Jesus, every one of us, in the whole country, the 10 o'clock news 
would only be 15 minutes long. In his mind, with all good news, the TV news would be shorter. There'd be not much to report about except good news, no violence, no killings, no murders. Advent is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to get back to the basics. Advent invites us to ask ourselves, what is really important in my life? What's really important to me? Advent, and especially today's readings, challenge us to look at our priorities in life. Many times we get into a rut, into a routine, but Advent, a time of waiting, preparation, where God runs after us, God pursues us, is a great time to really put in perspective the priorities in our lives. Above all, Advent and our readings today ask us if Jesus is the number one priority in my life. All three readings talk about the need to prepare the way of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. All three readings tell us that if our lives are not what they should be, we should do something about it. In other words, if we've strayed from the basics, then today's readings invite us to return back to them. If we've placed our work ahead of our families, then today's readings invite us to change the situation. In all my years of priesthood, I've been very blessed with the gift of priesthood for over 41 years. No one, no one ever on their deathbed ever said to me, you know, Father Greg, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. I've heard regrets, more time with my family, more time with friends, more time in prayer. But no one ever said, geez, I wish I'd more spent time at the office. It doesn't work that way. If we've placed success out of our personal relationship with God. And today's readings invite us to change this. Where do I put my energy? What are my priorities? Where our treasure is, there will our heart also be. Where our treasure is, there will our heart also be. The following poem was written by an elderly man on his deathbed. I was a revolutionary when I was young. And all my prayer to God was, Lord, give me the courage and strength to change the world. As I approached middle age and realized that half my life was gone without my changing a single soul, I changed my prayer to, Lord, give me the grace to change all those who come in contact with me, just my family and friends, and I shall be satisfied. Now that I'm an old man and my days are truly numbered, my one prayer is, Lord, give me the grace to change myself. Give me the grace to change myself. If I prayed this from the very start, I should not have wasted my life. This is what Advent is all about. It's a time to take inventory of our lives and make changes. So as we get ready for Christmas, we're all busy. COVID-19 still upon us and getting worse. I realize all that. Advent is an opportunity to take inventory of our lives and to make changes. Even one change this Advent season would be terrific. One of the greatest tragedies in life is to believe that God could never forgive me. No matter how many steps we take away from God, it only takes one step to get back to God. For the destination is not as critical as the journey. Someone once said this, we are like animals when we kill. We are like human beings when we judge. We are like God when we forgive. We are like animals when we kill. We are like human beings when we judge. We are like God when we forgive. May God bless all of you, stay healthy, and may the bearers please, please, bearers, win on Sunday. Amen. Say to the cities of Judah, prepare the way of the Lord. Go to the mountain tops, lift your voice. Jerusalem, here is your God. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. 
and gathers the lambs in his 